Okay, so we're going to start by looking at the types, the different types of data that you can have. And data can come in a couple of forms. We can have categorical data, and we can also have numerical data. And those are basically what they sound like. Categorical data come in the form of categories, and those are word responses. So if I'm talking to a group of people and I'm trying to collect information about their eye colour, for example, I might get hazel and blue and brown and green as responses. And those are all words. They're, if, you, if you like, you can think of them as categories. People have answered me in something that is not measurable as such. It's just, it's a word. Other examples of that might be if I ask what footy team you go for. So we've got... Uh, the magpies and we've got the bombers things like that that's you're not going to give me a number response to something like what footy team do you barrack for numerical data on the other hand is what it sounds like it's going to be numbers and the number responses numerical data can be broken down again into discrete numerical data and continuous now discrete is a little bit similar to uh, categorical in a sense that only certain responses can be given. So if I ask you what your shoe size is, you might say seven, or you might say 7.5, or you might say eight, something like that. But you're not gonna tell me 7.359215. You know, that's that's not an answer because you can't measure your your shoe size to within an inch of its life. It's only in these half sizes, right? So that is discrete because it's a number answer that you're giving me, but there are only certain number answers that are, make sense. Continuous data, on the other hand, what if I asked you how tall you were? You could tell me 160 centimeters, or you could tell me 160.1592376205. You know, we could measure that for as many decimal places as we wanted to, depending on how crazy we're going into the specifics of the measurement, right? So continuous is about, you can measure it to within an inch of its life. Discrete, there can only be certain responses. So some other answers for things like that, discrete. What about if I asked you uh, how many kids there are in your family? You could tell me there is one, you could tell me there's two, you could tell me there's three, you could tell me there's four. But you're not going to tell me that you there are 3.75 children in your family, <laughs> unless your mum's you know six months pregnant. No, not really. Um, the, there are only certain responses that you can give. These ones here, and answers measured to within an inch of their life don't make sense. But what if I asked you uh, how old the different kids in your family were? You could tell me one's three, and or you could tell me they're three, you know, point whatever whatever they're three years seven months 21 days and six hours and two minutes you know we could measure that right down the line um, but you can't say that there's that there's a certain number of you know a decimal number of people in your family so discrete answers you can only um, discrete data rather I should say you can only give certain responses for continuous if you can measure it to within an inch of its life, then it's continuous. So speed, how fast was someone going? Or um, height, how tall they are, how much does someone weigh? Um, how, how long did it take to get from A to B? You know, things like that. That's continuous. So just going back up here, we have categorical data, word answers. Numerical data, number answers discrete being only certain numbers that you can tell me is the answer, and continuous being we could measure this down to an absolute um, really, really finite point if we wanted to. We might just say 160, 165, 170 as our answers, but if we wanted to, it's the kind of data we could really, really measure. Now, why is knowing the different types of data important? Well, for a couple of reasons. On an exam, they might say, here is a, a, a bunch of answers. Is this categorical or numerical data? That's come up on exams before. So just knowing this stuff, you could get a couple of points at the end of the year, which is handy because this is fairly basic stuff we're looking at now. Um, the other reason is that depending on what kind of data you've got will 
uh, dictate how you might display it. So there's different kinds of ways that we can look at data. We can look at bar charts, stem plots, frequency histograms, all types of things and different way, methods of displaying the data depends on what kind of data it is. So categorical data you might represent in a few different ways. You could put it in a pie chart or in a bar chart and numerical data you would also represent in different ways and that one you might put in a frequency histogram or a frequency table or you might put it in a stem and leaf plot, stem plot, or you could put it in a dot plot. And all of these things we're going to go through in some later tutorials. But the basic thing you need to know is what kind of data it is will dictate the way you represent the data visually.